Hello everybody, this is Elena and I'm coming at you with yet another voiceover video. I will not at all be replacing my actual videos where you can actually see me for voiceover videos, but just for the time being, there will probably be some more of these. The way I see it is that it's better than me not uploading at all, right? Like, let me know, tell me. Do you not mind if it's a voiceover? I mean, I think it's almost like better. You can like go for a walk and listen to it, you know? But while I was researching this case, I noticed that there aren't that many images that have to do with this case online. So I'm warning you right now, a lot of this video, the screen will just be black as if this is some sort of podcast. And also segueing into this, cases that don't have that much information or that many photos, what if instead of making single videos on them, I put three, four of these cases into one podcast where I will enter images like I do in this video, but it will be much longer. So yeah, tell me what you think and let's get started. Check, 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 mic two, one, two. Why am I hitting this against my face? What's up everyone? I hope that you are safe and having just the best day that you've ever had in your whole life. And if you haven't, I hope that you are doing everything you can to make sure that you're having the best day of your life. Yeah, that's right. You better. Today we are going to be talking about the case of missing Paige Renkowski. Now, I learned a little bit about this case and didn't even realize that it happened in Michigan, which is where I'm from. So, on May 24th, 1990, it was the Thursday before Memorial Day weekend. And for a lot of people in Michigan, what we do during like the summer, during the holidays is we'll go, quote, up north, meaning that we will literally go up north to northern areas of Michigan. And Paige was actually last seen on the highway around this time. And it was very, very, very busy and the traffic was going really slow because of all of these people going up north. And somewhere between 3 and 4.30 p.m., Paige Minkowski was last seen alive. There are no reports, confirmed or unconfirmed anyone seeing Paige after 4 30 p.m. So let's talk a little bit about Paige. She was born February 2nd, 1960 in Lansing, Michigan. She was a substitute teacher that had a dream of working with deaf students. She was living in DeWitt, Michigan and when was going to be getting married later that year. She had three sisters and two amazing parents and this girl loved to skateboard, sing, and swim. She was apparently a tomboy with a very bubbly personality and just a lot of fun to be around, with a good heart too. Earlier, on the day that she went missing, Paige dropped her mother off at the Detroit Metropolitan Airport and then stopped to visit a friend in Canton, Michigan. Between 2.30 and 2.45, she stopped at a liquor store for beer before heading westbound on I-96, oh my god, I know where that is, on her way home. She was driving a 1986 Silver Cutlass Calais near exit 129 Fowler, police actually found Paige's car. This car had its lights on, keys in the ignition, and the car was still running. The driver's side door was closed but unlocked, while the passenger side door was closed and locked. Also in the car were her shoes and her purse, so we can rule out, we can think to rule out any situation where she's trying to run away and start a new life, but as I've already said, she was about to get married later that year, it just doesn't add up. At first, police treated this as actually an abandoned car case, so, so instead of this car being processed as it should by forensic analysts, it was actually just towed away because that's what they thought it was just a car that someone left and you can see this photo of the interior of the car so as i've already said a lot of witnesses saw Paige on this highway and a lot of these witnesses say they actually saw her talking to a man and some other witnesses say she was talking to two men and interestingly enough most of these witnesses report a burgundy minivan parked near Paige's car but people have also said it could be a white pickup truck, a red cargo van, or a black truck with an emblem on it. I mean, all the cars are going like 60 plus miles an hour. It's kind of hard to, you know, to pinpoint this. At least 80% of 800 tips that people send in about Paige were of her speaking to an African-American man, while some others say it was a Hispanic man. 
A few witnesses say they saw him leaning on the car and they could have actually looked for a fingerprint or thumbprint or handprint on the car, but it was not treated as a crime scene. And that really sucks because how were they supposed to know it was a crime scene? Even though this car was towed and taken away, they actually were able to get some fingerprints and a palm print off of the car's exterior, but to this day, they've never been able to match them. Paige was wearing a white silk shirt with multicolored loose fitting pants and a long beaded necklace the last time she was seen. Interestingly enough, about six months after Paige went missing, investigators received a letter with a map. The letter reads that the information may be a red herring. It's really hard to verify information on this case. So apparently this map is supposed to be the supposed route taken by her abductor or abductors once she was taken from her car. And much later, in November 2011, the FBI, state, and local police were able to use this map to find a property in Conway Township, but, and they excavated it, but unfortunately, they didn't find any remains. But there are also reports by the Lansing State Journal that the investigators might have literally read the map wrong. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can laugh about it, but it, it's not funny. It's, I mean, this is someone's, you know, family that needs closure. So some people think that this was a staged accident because there was a little damage to the front of Paige's car, but I think that maybe the people in front of her could have either purposely or not purposefully tapped their brakes and she ran into the front of their car. I would know I've done that. <laughs> it was my mom's car yikes that was fun but it didn't seem to be enough damage for it to be a staged accident you'd think there would be a lot more damage another theory that i think is so interesting and i feel like we need to take into account in a lot more cases is that maybe someone was impersonating a police officer to get her on the side of the road and out of her car which is terrifying and that same year she went missing there was a woman who reported to local police that a random man pulled up beside her car and flashed a police badge in an attempt to get her to pull over. And this was near the same area where Paige disappeared. So this seems to be the most likely situation. So unfortunately, there are literally no suspects in this case. It's such a shame. There have been some people of interest, but none of them have seemed to truly be Paige's abductor and murderer. There's just not been enough evidence. What well, may of 2020, which is why I'm posting this video now, marks 30 years that Paige has been missing. Paige's mother actually passed away in December 2017 after years and decades of tireless devotion trying to get her daughter back. Even back in 2015, the family made a GoFundMe for cold case situations across all of America. And that is about it on the disappearance of Paige Minkowski. Let me know what you guys think of this case and as always, leave me suggestions for new cases that you want to cover because while I have a huge list of 100 cases that I need to make videos on because I love these cases, I'm always open to new ideas and I always do your guys' requests before I go to my list. So at any point, just let me know. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I'll see you in my next video or hear you in my, I don't know. I don't know. Bye.